What is going on guys? Today we're going to be making a very quick um, sort of vertex painted puddle. So, basically what this looks like is just like this. So if we get closer you can obviously see this sort of like a puddle effect here as we paint over it. Making sure we're on the red channel for this one. Uh, as I paint the dry areas it will get it wet. And as I hold shift and left click we're going to reverse that. And if I were to go very weak strength, we can sort of slightly see that get more and more wet as we hold the left click on it. So you can have like a more damp surface rather than completely wet. All right. So how do we do that? So basically this is, um, if you watched the last video, it's still vertex painting, but it's basically just taking our base material or texture and making it a little bit darker and then making that surface also reflective and taking away the normals, right? So we're going to be using this concrete texture. So let's right click that. So right click your actual texture and get create material and it will automatically plug it in to concrete uh, puddle. We'll call it. It will automatically plug it into our base color now what we need to do is get a vertex color in and this is going to be working as our vertex painting so we're going to be using the red channel here so if we hold l and left click we'll get a up plug that into there and as i said what we want is so when a surface gets wet it usually gets darker so whatever material you're using here um you tend to want to make it get darker as it gets wet now you can have more advanced materials using height maps where if you've got like cobblestone can have actually the um, wetness filling up the cracks. But there's going to be more of a basic puddle where it's be it's going to be better for more flatter surfaces like concrete. So take this and we're going to multiply that. Oh, that's on the multiply. Drag it off. Right, molt with T at the end. And you'll get multiply. You can hold M and left click as well to get your multiply. Plug that into, I believe, B. I believe B or A. I always get confused. I think it's A. Plug that into A and we're going to make it slightly darker. So 0.75. And we're going to plug that into B and then plug that straight into base color. And that you can see. Then I've got other textures for this. I've got a um, normal map and I've also got displacement map. We're not going to use displacement. and um, We are we are going to use roughness. So grab our normal and roughness. Drag those in. And we're going to create two more laps. Put it over here and we'll do our normals next. So red channel into all of them. So one important thing about this one as well is as it gets wet, it also dips in. We're using displacement. So make sure you're using a high poly uh, mesh for this. So we're just using a plane with lots of um, polygons on it or lots of vertices on it. Cool. Back to here. Plug your normals into B. Plug your roughness into B. And then we want... So we want the water to have no normals. Now you can actually blend this if you want. If you want to blend it slightly between this, it can make it look like the normals are kind of coming through. But when we want it completely wet, we just want it to look like the water sitting on top. And the best way to do that is just to have it flat normals. And for that, you just need to hold free, left click, put this over here. Set that to blue, so no red, no green, just blue. Plug it into there, and that will be like just having flat normals. So it won't look like there's any concrete bump to it. So it'll sort of just look like it's a flat piece of water over the top. And then for our roughness, because it's water, we want it very wet. So I don't like actually going to a complete value of zero, so maybe 0 0.05. So it's basically all the way there on wetness. Plug in our normals. Plug in our roughness. And then the last thing we want to do is we actually want to make it have height, like I said. So when we paint, it droops into the ground. The reason I want that is you don't need that. But the reason I like having that is because puddles will fill up the area that's lowest. So if we paint onto the surface um, and that area gets wet, it also lowers that area down. Because that area, you can see it sort of drooping down as I do it. When, uh, the lowest area on the surface will be the area to fill up with water first. So it's just a cool effect to have that part go down to sort of uh, sort of feel like it's simulate, simulating um, that area making sense to fill up with water first. Now, 
if you're pre-painting all this that's fine but if you're wanting to dynamically make it so these areas fill up with water it might look a bit weird with the actually concrete lowering down into the ground so this works more for when you want to set an area to already be wet and you want to hand paint sort of the vertices there so let's go back to doing that now we need one more lerp put that into there and then what we want to do is plug that into so we want basically zero to mean it's not drooping down at all so that would be in b and then this one we want to pull into the ground so we'll just make that like minus 10 and then you'll usually need to multiply that by something called a vertex normal so let's type in and press enter and what this will do is it'll make it actually go up and down rather than sort of when you don't have this it kind of makes it bump in a weird direction so without further explanation you just need this to make it so it bumps down correctly you can see that node disappearing as i do that oh no it's not doing now uh all right plug that into world position offset and that's basically done so if you have other materials or textures should i say you just replace um this this and this with your other textures and sort of follow the same process again you i like to multiply my base texture by a lower uh, lower than one value to make it darker that way when you paint on it that surface gets darker making it look damp so now if i were to throw that new material on which is our concrete puddle and make sure you're in mesh painting go to paint make sure we've got red ticked and when we start painting will look like that part of the surface is wet and as we hold shift and left click we will dry that surface up and you can also if you don't want to hold shift and do it you can like swap the colors around so as long as one the value of one is here we'll be uh, sort of painting the base value which is dry and if we swap it we'll be painting the wetness and that's how you get a very simple puddle i hope you guys enjoyed and i'll catch you next time